so I was introduced to the MP01 maybe four years ago. Mm -hmm. I saw one um, down at NJMP and it sparked my interest. Like I was, you know, I was like, oh, what is that? You know, it's a prototype car. And of course, you know, anytime you see a prototype, you're always like, wow, that's that's cool. You know, it's, it's something neat. I've always liked the prototype car and these, the price range versus kind of what you get with the car, just to me look more appealing. I was looking for something that was more about the driver capability as opposed to how much money could really be thrown at it. Honestly, I had my spec Miata at Sonoma, Jeremy Crissette, the VP of NASA, was pitted right next to me. We saw his car. I asked him, hey, can I, can I sit in it? It's like the allure of a prototype at Le Mans. If, you, if you're a racer, you watch Le Mans 24 hours, prototypes are the top class. So the perception of these cars is like that. Like it's got that mystique in that prototype feel. You know, the speeds are decent, but it just, they just look cool. But really they're, they're easy to maintain. Cost of ownership is low. Everything is just overbuilt. You have a $70,000 race car that is running within 13 seconds of an LMP3 that is, that's worth, I mean, those LMP3s are used, but they're probably still worth a quarter million dollars or more. Wow. And so that's the value and that's the thing. And when people start to see that, that's where the interest comes in. It's a spec class, so it kind of helps to promote people to actually kind of work together as opposed to being, you know, against each other all the time. I ran ST1 for a while with the other car that I had, and no one was really ever wanting to lend a hand. You kind of see each other around the grid, but not a whole lot. But within the MP01 program, like any track I've gone to, and there's other ones there, we always are parked next to each other. Their goal is mainly to just be here to actually make friends, help each other out. Yeah, whenever anyone's having an issue, whether it's, you know, the guy right next to you or three cars down, you know, they're more than willing to throw in a hand and do whatever they can just to help everyone out. Because everyone's goal here isn't to try and really beat the other one. It's just to make sure everyone's out there and having a good time. And then I had an opportunity to drive one. And when I drove it, and this was the old model now, this was only 185 horsepower to a crank, a lot of different aero. It was, it, was, it was the first version of the car. And, but it was still impressive. It was impressive to drive. It was fun to drive. And I was like, huh, this is interesting. So I was looking for something to do. Over the last couple of years, you know, I came out of the Trans Am series. Um, uh, you know, I had uh, my, my, my last season of, of Trans Am was very disappointing. So I was looking to kind of change, change where I was going. And I knew I wanted to be a team owner. So finally, the, right about this time last year, they announced that Sabico um, were going to take control of the Yalan program and develop the cars for NASA at that point. And uh, so Sabico is owned by Ben and Ed. Um, the, they are IMSA guys, you know, uh, former crew guys for IMSA. Um, they, they used to crew the Delta Wing car. They got a lot of experience. They're really, really smart guys. And um, so they took over the program and started with it. And so once I had the opportunity the end of last year to talk to them, that's then when I started pulling the trigger on my program. You know, I'm a business guy, so I had some foresight with what I wanted to do. And them being a manufacturer, they also needed some support from a, you know, from a car and development side. So it kind of worked hand in hand. And I, and I kind of took the approach of like, all right, guys, let's partner together. Like, you guys be the manufacturer. I'm buying four cars from you. I'm in the Northeast. I'm, I'm conveniently located to, to five different motorsports tracks within literally five hours. We have a good pool of people up over here. Let me be your Northeast rep, distributor, factory team. Like, you know, I threw all these things on the table and they agreed. And so, you know, so we're developing that relationship. The other cars are being built, you know, and our intention is to take this program. Um, you know, they started with the idea of a four car MP01 program, Arrive and Drive. Um, you got a number of drivers out there that are interested in um, just showing up and paying, paying for a seat, basically. They pay me, I bring the cars, I bring the crew, I bring everything. They get in the car, they race it, they get out of the car and they go relax. You know, they're not maintenance in it, they're not worried about it, they're not worried about, you know, getting it to track. You know, none of that stuff. That, that's all on us. And there's a lot more racers like that out there than there is, you know, guys that want to actually have their own cars. And as great as it is to sell these cars, there's still a lot of people like that just, again, want to have their gear and show up, you know. 
Um, people are seeing the car, there's a lot of interest, and once we have more cars, there's gonna be a lot more interest being sparked. And, and we're getting, and there's a lot of interest being sparked now. The development between the push that Jeremy's doing out on the West Coast and with NASA corporate, a lot of people are getting noticed and we're getting a lot of calls now. So people are calling Sabico and Sabico just wants to be a manufacturer. So depending on where they're at, they're referring them to me. So for test drives, car interest, car purchase, things like that. And so we're going to develop, we're developing a program now because again, we've only had our car since February. So we're trying to get it dialed in before we put people in the car. Yeah. We're now starting to talk like, so I uh, can't remember if it was yesterday or the day before, but a gentleman was interested in doing a test drive on the car. He's from down here in Florida. I gave him all my information and he would be interested in actually flying up to Philadelphia to do a test drive down at NJMP. And, and that's, it's better for us that way because if I get the people to come to New Jersey, our shop is there, that's our home track. Um, I'm a member at NJMP, so I can get them on track for a discounted price. Um, and then we can, control, we can control the outcome of it and it doesn't cost them as much because they still have to pay even for a test day. Um, there's still a cost associated with it. So we can kind of keep those costs down to get people in the car to test drive the cars. And so, so there's a lot of interest with that. We got some doctors out on Long Island that have contacted me. They've actually, um, via my Facebook posts over the weekend, one of them actually posted and was like, oh, I hope we can get down and test drive the car soon. You know, you know, one of my posts. So that was nice to see. And uh, so, yeah, so we're, um, you know, this program, we're, we're excited for it. I mean, it's, I, I think it's, it's a winner. Let me just show you real quick. So these are the upgraded ones. Just, it's just, oh, that's nice. Oh, dude, it's amazing. And I have them on during the race. Now, when I'm driving, obviously it's less noticeable, but when we're on the grid. Oh, uh, yeah, I out, totally need that. And that's, those are, I think, twice as powerful as the ones it came with. Yeah, you can we get have, these from Ben. I don't have any in mine, car. Dude. So yeah. they, they came from Ben? Yes. I'm going to have to ask them for them dude, and pipe them in. Awesome. They're Because awesome. that would be nice even with the cool suit. Like, because oh, I run dude. the cool suit, too. And I'm just like, and you saw my video. I don't recently. know how you're not dying without a cool suit. I just, heat doesn't bother me. I just internally chill out. <laughs> We're constantly checking over everything, but I mean, rotors last forever, brakes last forever, tires. I swear I put 10 heat cycles on a tire and I swear I can heat gun them, clean them up and I, they look like a brand new tire. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I'm, I feel like they're gonna harden before anything. Um, but outside of that, I mean, like we don't, we do, we do personally oil changes and spark plugs every 10 hours. Um, we'll change the um, uh, we change the gear oil every five hours, so we're constantly you know with the fluids like that. Um, we'll do a caliper rebuild on all four corners at the end of every season. You know, a lot of guys won't do sure. that. We'll do that. Um, so but it's meant to be overbuilt. Yeah, it's meant yeah. to be kind of a DIY. Bring it. Doesn't need a lot. I'd say what does it weigh? Eighteen hundred pounds. No, oh, fourteen fifty without the driver. All right. So that's, well, that's a, that's a that's a that's a debate. You know what I mean? When you got a light weight like this no, guy, I just said without the driver, fourteen fifty right, without the driver, right. just so, the car. Right. So our minimal weight is seventeen seventy five. Right. Okay. Yeah. He's at minimal weight with him in the car. I'm at nineteen ten with me in the car. So you guys, needless to say, there's a disparity. So in this case, you know, these cars have been around for a while, but once the momentum starts, I would hope in the next two years we've i got hope so 25 30 I, cars it's the, it's the media thing too like i'm pushing on brett who's the media guy for nasa yeah to, right. to get get articles in get articles about us like yeah. I, and i'm not trying to be selfish about it but get articles about what i'm doing sure. in the team so people know yeah. about it yeah, just we need more cars so yeah we'll get there the problem is you're all the way on the west coast you know what i mean yeah so you're gonna end up having to rent cars from or, me or, or so you can race with us here and i'll just fly out for or it you could do that it. too you can maintain it for I me could. i'll just drive out i could right? yeah I'll fly out. we can haul it maintain it and you know i mean again we won't run any west coast tracks but if right. you needed to get it there we could you know we'll right. figure that out <laughs> add, add, add balance to it a mileage log on my baby <laughs> Good afternoon and welcome to the 2021 NASA Championships race here at the Daytona International Speedway. The weather this weekend has not been looking so great. The track is dry now, but it looks like there might be some rain coming in here later this afternoon. Hopefully it holds off for just a little while longer.
We're getting ready for a Group E championship race here at Daytona, and it looks like the NASA prototype cars are going to be the first wave of cars on track. We're starting to see more of these prototype cars at events across the country. They're a fraction of the cost of the IMSA prototype designed in partnership with the National Auto Sports Association, purpose-built for NASA events like we have here today. Tony Bracco Hiampa in the number 34 MPO one has taken the lead in the qualifiers for this weekend. These guys have been turning in some incredible lap times, really looking forward to seeing how these cars perform in their class out here at the famous Daytona International Speedway. The starting lineup for the MPO ones is going to be Tony Bracco Hiampa, then Robert Mesmer and Mark Abuze. And we are off for our Group E Championship race for the 2021 NASA Championships presented by Toyo Tires. Running together again, the NASA prototype originally developed by Elan, but now improved by Sebaco, a Mazda, I believe, two liter engine, all spec parts, a very cool little car. That was number 227, Robert Mesmer, and number 27, Mark Ambusade in the NASA prototypes. Working through some traffic, this has been a fantastic battle between the two of them. And we have the results of the race for the NPO ones. Mark Abu Zaid ended up taking the win with Robert Mesmer just behind. It looks like though Tony Bracco Hiapa was out ahead earlier in the race. He ended up coming in third. A great race between all three of the NASA prototypes. Right here, the number two MP01 in the country. Right here, man, number two. All right, what a race today. Baby's going home. She's gonna need some TLC. Got another race up in Watkins Glen in three weeks, I think. And uh, go up there and kick ass up over there.